I'd like to invite you all to settle in and our young people are going to be here in a couple of minutes and what I'd like to invite you to do is so exciting today right but today is a day about about prayer and about the closeness of our young people to God we want to do everything we can to really focus on that so why don't we take the next few minutes before they actually get here to just kind of be quiet and say a prayer for them. Maybe you want to think back to the day of your own First Communion and how special that was for you, how the people in your family that, that loved you so much really did everything to make that a beautiful day, and, you know, we can kind of bring that around for the kids today. We only have a couple of little rules today. One is that we want you all to sing and to celebrate and pray together. We also want you, and I'm going to do this too, you know that wonderful device? You turn it off. And turning it off will alleviate, because we don't do pictures during First Communion. We have pictures of everybody out front right after the ceremony. And then we'll allow you to come back in here. And uh, the church is free until about 2.30 when we have a wedding. So that should be enough time to take pictures and have a good time. But, uh, but please, uh, don't distract yourself or anybody else. I know it's terribly tempting, and sometimes we think like, oh, they won't notice if I do it. No, sneaky, sneaky. And uh, if you think that doesn't get noticed, I'll tell you about the time I was sneaking a picture of Michelangelo's Last Supper, Da Vinci's Last Supper in Milan, and almost got arrested. <laughs> True story. <laughs> So, you know, let's just go, low, go with the flow here today. Put the gizmos away and really enjoy the, the children and their prayer. So we'll be here in just a moment. Let's be quiet. Let's pray for them. Good morning, and welcome to the Basilica Parish of the Sacred Hearts of Jesus and Mary. Today is a day to celebrate and rejoice. We welcome all parishioners and visitors alike. We open wide our doors to all who come here today. Today we celebrate the beautiful sacrament of the First Holy Communion. We are grateful for all of you, family and friends, who have gathered to pray with us and support our children as they receive the Lord's, the Lord for the first time. Please remember, absolutely no photography or recording of any kind during our Mass. We will provide plenty of opportunities to take pictures following the ceremony, both inside and outside our Basilica <coughs> Church. But during our Mass, please let us put these concerns aside and keep our attention on our children and on our prayers. Thank you. Let us lift our hearts in worship and praise as together we stand and join in our entrance hymn, Joy is Everywhere. Once again, that is Joy is Everywhere. Oh. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, may the grace, the peace, the love of our Lord Jesus be with you always. Good morning, everyone. Let's do a little better than that. What do you say? Good morning, everyone. It's a happy day, right? Probably the most joyful day that we could have. Our young people with us, working so hard to understand the great sacrament today of the body and blood of Christ, the Eucharist that we receive. Feeling your support, feeling your care, your love for them, understanding how badly you want them to be formed in this way in their Christian and Catholic life. So as we come together today, let's bow our heads in prayer and ask our God to give us his forgiveness and mercy. You are sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You feed us always with your body, with your blood. Lord, have mercy. mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Loving God, we ask your blessing on us today and especially on our children who come before you. May we be blessed by the sacrament they are to receive and come to share fully in the life that you always bless us with. For this we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's all be seated now for our readings. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord.
worship and adore and sing songs to the For the just and the upright of heart, the just one shall see the glory of the Lord. Exalt, O people of God. Be glad in the Lord. Give thanks to God's name. My friends, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his friends, I am the vine, and you are the branches. Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. And whoever does not remain in me is like a withered, rejected branch, it is good to only to be thrown out and burned in the fire. But if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you can ask God for whatever you need and it will be done to you. In this way is our God glorified that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. You all look fantastic. Wow. And, and I want you to know that we talk to everybody like in school and all. And, and this is going to be the school clothes now forever and ever. You can get dressed up every day and whether you go to Southampton or another school or OLH, there's your school clothes. This guy's looking at me like, you better be kidding me, man. <laughs> Isn't it great to get all dressed up and to look so wonderful? I mean, I'm only kidding you about it. Actually, the girls are looking like, all right, that's wonderful. But, you know, kind of a sign of something happening pretty special. You don't get dressed up like this every day, so something pretty awesome must be happening. The weather cooperated. Boy, did I pray for this. Boy, let me tell you, after last weekend, wow, that was really pretty, pretty much a soaker. I said, you've got to, Lord, you've got to give us a good day today especially if there's a lot of barbecues and stuff like that going on, right? 
definitely. And, you know, I was kind of thinking of preparing for this too today, and um, I, I hear that you guys actually have a few bucks, because sometimes you get like little gifts on First Communion Day and all. Is that right? Yeah? Are you hoping for that? <laughs> Can I give you a little advice? If you get a card today, read the card, just don't shake it, okay? That's very polite. And so I have all this stuff here. What is this? All these crazy... Th well, you know what I was thinking is that I could kind of clean up my room a little bit and maybe, uh, maybe get you guys to buy some of these things that I have. Hmm, there's one thing in particular I was looking for. Where did that go? Oh, I see. You're probably wondering, why do I have so much junk in my room? Even I don't know. You know, it's, a, it's sort of a mystery to me. But anyway, I was thinking that you might like, you might like to buy this box. What do you think? I, I'd let it go for 50 bucks. What do you think? No? No good? No? What do you think? You need a little black box? No? Let me, uh, let me show you what's in the box. That'll look pretty, right? Yeah. yeah. Maybe a hundred bucks now? No. no? What do you think? Do you know what they are? No. Do you know what they are? Uh, cufflinks. Uh, cufflinks. They link your cuffs. <laughs> Anybody got their cuffs linked here today? That's not something most guys do anymore, right? Cufflinks, very fancy, kind of kind of like on the end of your cuffs. They button it together. I, 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 nobody's saying I got to have that. Right? Nobody's saying, I gotta have, I gotta have that. Let me tell you a little story about this. These cufflinks were given to me by my Uncle Tony. And uh, his father, my grandfather, was also named Tony. Didn't have a lot of imagination in the family. Um, so my grandfather, Anthony, my grandmother gave him these on their wedding day. So a hundred and... 120 years ago, okay? And my uncle said, you know, I want you to have these and maybe at the right time to kind of pass them down to one of the great-great-grandchildren. Isn't that amazing? That's really old, right? Belonged to my grandfather and my grandmother, a wedding gift. Can I ask you something? Do you think I really would sell these? Why? because it's precious to me, exactly. So this is, as they often say on TV, some things you can buy and other things are priceless, right? Priceless. So this is pretty, now why am I actually doing this today? Well, because you know what, today, in the back of church, there's something that looks pretty simple. It's a big bowl of hosts and some wine. And, and a couple of years ago, if you saw that, you'd think, ah, what's the big deal about this, right? You've got a big bowl of these bread hosts, got a couple little cruets of wine. What's the big deal? It's like nothing to get all excited about, right? But now, like you are different today because you know the story about what's going on with that bread and wine, that we're gonna bring it to the altar and that I'm going to, in your name, bless that. And the ordinary bread and wine is going to do what? What's going to happen to that? What do we say happens to the bread and wine? Turns into the body and blood of Jesus. You know, you have to be pretty mature to understand that. And, and you did such a beautiful reading. The story, tell me your name again. Keaton? Keaton. Keaton, you did a great job of reading that. I think you actually almost read that in one breath, <laughs> which even I can't do. And you read the story about what happened to the bread and wine with Jesus all those years and years and years ago, right? And, and not only did you read the story, but you know the story and why it's important. None of us would be here today if that story didn't happen. If the people who are Jesus' followers didn't every week after week after week sit down with each other 
and take the bread and bless it and take wine and share it. And whenever they did that, Jesus was with them, and they knew that. In fact, over there in, in the back of our church, there's a, a beautiful window. A lot of people think it's the Last Supper. It's really from Emmaus, where the disciples first time broke bread, and they recognized that Jesus was with them, even though he had died on Good Friday, and even though he was starting to believe in the resurrection, whenever they took the bread and the wine and blessed it, they believed that he was still with them. That's an amazing story, a very amazing story. In the gospel today, it tells us something else about the story, and that is that that bread and wine is how we get connected forever and ever to Jesus. And he said to his disciples, I am the vine, and you are the branches, and without me, you can do nothing. I don't know if we really believe that. Can you think of some of the best things that you guys do? Who here among you is pretty smart? Nobody? <laughs> Come on. All right, who's good at sports? Oh, okay, we're all better at sports. Good for us, right? Any artists here? Yes. Any photographers? Any people who can take good videos? Post them to your friends, right? Right? Anybody here good in math? Science, English. I want to tell you today, all of the things that we have that we say are our gifts, we would not have any of those things if the Lord didn't give them to us. He made us intelligent. He made us gifted. He made us smart. He's the vine, and we are the branches. You know, you go out east, right? You see the vine and branches? We have all of those vineyards that grow on Long Island, such a beautiful thing on our island. And when you go out in the winter, you see just the vine. And in fact, they cut all the branches back in the winter, so it just looked pretty crummy. Just these sticks coming up out of the ground. And about this time of year, the branches start to grow. And they turn beautiful. And eventually they will give us something wonderful to drink. And maybe part of our celebration here the wine to go with the bread in the Eucharist. So the vine kind of feeds the branches. And just like that, in a lot of other ways, Jesus is our vine. He helps us to be strong and smart and good and wonderful and helpful. And in all those things, whenever we're close to him, we have what we need to really, really be wonderful in our world. He says something really powerful. He says, without that, you can do nothing. Maybe a lot of times we think, well, I don't know if I really need anything else other than my brains and my sports and my skills and all. I'm pretty good on my own. But Jesus says, don't start thinking that way. Apart from me, apart from my gifts, apart from my life, you can do nothing. I have a story to tell you about that that, that I witnessed when I was about a little bit older than you. I remember when people walked on the moon for the first time. <laughs> How many people remember watching that on TV? That was a long time ago, right? That was a long time ago. And there were three men who flew to the moon. Anybody remember their names? The first one is probably easy. The man who got out and walked on the moon first? Hmm? Albert Einstein? No, this was after that. But, it wasn't, but, you know, if it wasn't for Einstein understanding how the universe worked, we could have never gotten there. Armstrong. And there was another man with him who was the second one. Aldrin, Buzz Aldrin. And then there was a man named Michael Collins who never walked on the moon. But he drove the bus, so to speak. He was the one in the orbiter who sent them down and brought them back. And... He never got all the famous credit, but they couldn't have done that without somebody to be there to take care of him. And why am I telling you about those guys today? Because they were the first ones to receive communion, maybe the only ones to receive communion on the moon. It's a true story. And the year before that, when people were orbiting the moon, the astronauts read from the book of Genesis on Christmas Eve. And as things are often in our world, 
People said, oh, we don't want religious stuff on TV, so no more reading from the Bible from space, whatever. So when they landed on the moon, they said, Houston, the eagle has landed. Remember that? And then a lot of people don't know this, but it's a true story. After that, they said, could we turn the radio off for a moment? We have something important to do. And Houston said, we don't think that's a good idea. They said, it's just going to take a minute, but we got to do it. So they said, OK. They turned off the radio. And Buzz Aldrin, from his church, from his church in Houston, took out of his flight suit some hosts and a little chalice that had been blessed. And they received communion on the moon. And what did they read? Right before they received that, Buzz Aldrin read, I am the vine, and you are the branches, and apart from me, you can do nothing. And there were these two human beings doing something absolutely incredible and acknowledging that without God, without inspiration, without gifts, without a history, without a family, they could do nothing. You see this around you today? This is your family. People sometimes say to me, why do you go to church, Father Mike? Like, I say, because I have to, they pay me. <laughs> this is my family, that's why. These are the people I pray with. This is the people whose stories I know. These are the people whose joys I share and whose sorrows I help to carry. This is the vine. I'm only the branches. And so today, as we bring our young people to receive the Eucharist for the first time, there is nothing that we can do more for them to show them always that he is the vine and we are the branches. Without God's help, there's little we can really do in this world, and that with him, as Jesus said to his friends, just ask for whatever you need, and it will be done for you. So you know the story now? And so now you're ready to receive the Eucharist. So let's stand together now. We're going to bring our prayers before God as we come to celebrate the sacrament today. Loving God, we bring our prayers before you today. Humbly hear them. Answer our prayers as you promise to do all that we need. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, Bishop John, and Father Mike, may Jesus bless all those who lead and care for us, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in our world, in our community, in and in our home, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are poor, homeless, or hungry, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in our families or in our parish who are sick or suffering in any way, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our families who love us and pray for us today, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For our parents and teachers who helped us prepare to receive our First Communion, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, we bring all of these prayers before you today. We pray them in the name of Jesus and the power of the Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And let's be seated now as our young people bring forward our gifts of bread and wine today. As we bring our gifts to the table of the Lord, let us join our voices in singing, We Come to Your Feast. Once again, that is, We Come to Your Feast. We place upon your table a gleaming cloth of wine, the weaving of our stories, the fabric of our lives, the dreams of those before us, 
strengthen and perfect us, to challenge and perfect us, to love and word and deed. We come to your feast. We come to your feast. The young and the old, the bright and the bold, the greatest and the least. We come to your feast. We come to your feast. With the fruit of our land, the work of our hands, we come to Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Sacrifice with our hands, to the praise and glory of God's name, our good in all his holy church. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and salvation, always and everywhere to praise you, O God, but to praise you with greater joy than ever on this First Communion Day in this Easter season when Christ became our Paschal Sacrifice. In Christ, a new age has dawned for the world. The long reign of sin is ended. A broken world has been renewed. We are once again made whole. The joy of the resurrection fills the earth and all of creation praises your glory. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> At the time he was betrayed, entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new, the eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. 
Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, and with all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and those who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let's all stand together now. We are coming toward that moment of receiving for our young people. Let's pray for the building of the kingdom, God's kingdom, that is the world they live in. Let us pray for them today. In the words the Lord taught us to pray every day of our lives. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of our Lord be with you always. Let us offer to each other a sign of God's own peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who take away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. For receiving First Communion today, for all of us who are to receive the Eucharist, please follow the directions of our ushers. The children obviously will 
be receiving with their families first, and then they will help you to come to the altar so that everyone else would like to receive today can. And let's try to either sing the music with our choir today or to just pray for the children, keeping a good atmosphere of faith as the Eucharist is received. Please open your music program and join in singing today's communion hymn, Jesus, You Are Bread for Us.
So we always take a moment, prayerfully after we have received the Eucharist, after we have been in the presence of the Eucharist, to be thankful. The Eucharist itself means thanksgiving. To be thankful today, especially for the lives of our children, for the working of the Spirit of God in their lives, for those in our world who, as we say on the day of their baptism, are the first and best teachers in the ways of faith, their families, their parents, godparents, those who love them so deeply. We pray that the world may become a more hospitable place for all, a place where the life of Jesus is celebrated, place where the faith life of these children is nurtured. Let us take a moment quietly in prayer. And now I would like to ask the children who are our first communicants who receive today for the very first time to come up to join me at the altar. Come on up. And I'm going to turn around so everybody can, I want everybody to see you. What an idea. Spread out a little bit. So my parish family, what do you think of these young people today? You look so thrilled. You like, you like a standing ovation? It's really good, right? Really special. Well, you know what? This is going to be a little quieter, but just as important, because I want you guys to think about the people that you have to thank today, especially your, your parents, your families who are here with you today, for your catechists, the teachers in religion who worked with you, for Amanda Fennell and Christine Lynch and Kathy Servone and Kathleen Springer all the teachers at OLH, for all the staff here at Sacred Hearts, for Deborah O'Shaughnessy, our Director of Religious Education, Liz Parker, her assistant, and Gina, our Director of Liturgy here, and for our ushers and ministers and servers, and Bobby and Emma who sang with us today. We thank you for making this so beautiful. I want you to give them a big thank you, okay? Let's see you put your hands together. Yay. Now, I know a lot of you have some gifts today, maybe something that people gave you, a little cross or a prayer book or something like that. So we're going to bless all those gifts. And some of the families are saying now, oh my God, I left it in the car. Oh my God, I left it at Macy's. I got to pick it up on the way home. You know, whatever the story is, God will understand and reach out that blessing. So loving God, bless the many gifts given to our children today. May they always be for them a sign of your faith, your life, and your trust in them, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's all stand together. And truly, thank you for all being here today. I think this is the biggest celebration we've had here in the church in a long time, certainly with uh, all the troubles of the past few years that didn't really happen. And uh, what are you telling me about? Oh, okay, so F, right, so we have certificates for the children today. So see Deborah, or Deborah will see you, and you will get your certificate after Mass is over. But we, we are a very beautiful and large group today. Um, thanks for everybody who came out, especially for your singing and praying. So let's bow our heads in prayer. The Lord be with you. Amen. Loving God, we thank you today for the gift of the Eucharist. We thank you for blessing our young people with this 
sacrament of life. May we always keep the flame of faith alive in our hearts. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord is with you. And with your spirit. May God bless us now and always. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You're going to help me sing a verse of the song and then we'll process? And by the way, we're going to go outside. The children are going to take a picture together at the bottom of the bell tower, our tradition here for about 100 years at Sacred Hearts. And so we're going to, what are we going to sing, Emma? Our sending forth hymn is This Little Light of Mine. Once again, that's This Little Light of Mine. Oh, if you don't know this, that would be terrible. <laughs> This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Okay. You're all going to follow Sante. Follow him. Hey, what's going on? Hey, Michelle. 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 <laughs> Hey guys, you gotta let me up in the back, okay? <laughs> 